Hi, this is Tech again, and today I have a mod overview of this here ASRock board for you. Uh, this is a ASRock K7 NF2 RAID. Uh, I would say the best, if not the only one, actually, uh, that ASRock made with the Enforce 2 Ultra chipset. Uh, this board has a few unfortunate uh, design decisions uh, that require mods to fix it for overclocking. So we will go over them. One is, let's zoom in, the CPU VRM being fed by uh, 5 volts usually. There is this, this is the joke, it's usually sold to the board. I added my uh, 4 pin uh, ADX power connector here, so 12 volt for the CPU VRM. Now, I actually think I, I kind of have to redo this mod because, uh, well, the cable is, is on top of this MOSFET here, and I want to redo it so that. Uh, if I put a fan on here, because the, the VRM is definitely going to need a fan, uh, that the MOSFET doesn't overheat because it's uh, shielded from the airflow by this, this cable here. Uh, so that, that's something I have to do. Also usual stuff, recap board. Uh, those are 1500 microfarad, 2.5 volt. Nippon Chemicon caps here. Salvaged again because I still don't have new ones, but yeah uh, There is also CPU vCore mod. This is a usual feedback mod again All of this afterwards in detail So just regular feedback mod not Nothing too fancy then there's my usual measurement point stuff uh, Modic connectors as measuring points uh, VDD memory ground in the middle and up here we have the bottom one, I think is, uh, I, I still have to label this, the bottom one is a V core and the middle ones are ground. Let's flip it around. There we have the back. I took some time to make a bit of a fancier cap mod here again. Those are uh, three 47 microfarad MLCCs per pad, so 12 of them directly behind the CPU. Also on the back of this huge power plane here, this, this whole like reinforced area here is a V-core power plane. So we have our measuring point on that power plane and also three 220 microfarad uh, SP caps. And those are post caps, those are uh, tantalum polymers. I didn't have any 470 microfarad SP caps left, so I, I used some tantalums. Usually I don't really like them, but I think they're going to do something at least. Uh, so that's the, the caps I added up back here. Then there is the other monitoring wires. Uh, this yellow one goes to uh, VDD monitoring. So this whole power plan here is VDD. This is ideal for measuring points. Also the left, uh, let me get a better pointy thing, the left pin of these capacitors, this one and the one down here is also VDD. The top one here is not VDD, this is VMAM. The red wire is VMAM. Uh, alternative for VMAM is the left pin of this capacitor, this capacitor, this capacitor, and this capacitor. Not the top one. I'm going to get to those, this one shortly. As you can see, there is a wire running from my 20-pin uh, ADX power connector right up here. Now, this is the the second unfortunate choice of that Asrock made with this board uh, is to run. Um, the memory VRM of, of 3.3 volt rail. Uh, I basically changed it around. What you have to do here, again, I'm, I'm actually going to do this in detail afterwards, uh, is to remove two zero ohm resistors up here. And for the convenience, I added a input filtering capacitor as well. Uh, not strictly necessary because this is 
Well, SROG is using the the FED as a linear regulator as they like to do. Uh, so, but I I basically use this so I can attach my my five volts to the back of the board instead of the front. So basically making the motor a bit nicer. So uh, on the now it's the right pin here uh, of this capacitor. There is a five volt input, and again you have to remove those two. Uh, basically bridges otherwise you're going to have a mess uh, and probably end up destroying the board because you're pushing 5 volts into the 3.3 volt rail. Uh, now this here I, I tested a bit and if you do this mod I would either suggest uh, putting a heatsink on here or sticking to higher voltages. Uh, if I remember to do it, I'm going to uh, include a uh, image of this thing under load with uh, like thermal imaging here. Uh, from my uh, quick testing, uh, it turns out that, well, because it's a linear regulator, the uh, power consumption of this FET here goes up uh, with lower voltage actually. So. If you're running like 2.6 or 2.7 volts on here, uh, this gets it's over 50 degrees easily rather quickly. Uh, it, it doesn't seem to get anywhere close to dangerous for a MOSFET, so uh, I don't see any reason why not to do it. But I, I then uh, ran some wind bonds here just to quick, quickly test it. And instead of the like 52 or something degrees uh, with 2.6 or 2.7 volts I ran. Uh, I ran 3.3 on here and the MOSFET was under 50 degrees. So uh, basically less voltage drop across the MOSFET it seems uh, in this application. So this one is the MOSFET for uh, VDD. Also used as a linear regulator. Doesn't seem to get that hot, uh, surprisingly honestly, but yeah. Then down here we have the VDD and VMAM mods. Uh, I don't think you're going to see anything here. Uh, I will definitely do this one in detail as well. I think that's actually about it. Well, one more mention to uh, one of the best BIOS modder guys for socket A stuff. Again, digital buff. I'm going to include uh, a link to some mod biases from him in the description again. Uh, there is a bunch, I haven't tried all of them yet, but as these socket A boards do, they need modded BIOS for high FSB. So yeah, I'm going to include that. Anyways, I think that's about it for this SROC board. I will now switch to the computer. Okay, here we are, as it is tradition almost now, uh, we're going to start with the V-Core mod. Now you want to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pins from here. This is our feedback pin. And you can also grab it from this pad here. Or one of these two pads here. Uh, from there, it is as easy as it is usually, a variable resistor to ground. Uh, not going to look very good, no, is it? No. Uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, like that. Now, I would suggest using this unpopulated pad here, it's the easiest way. Uh, for ground points, the upper pad of this capacitor. The lower pad of this one and the lower pad of this one. Now, personally, I wouldn't use any of those because uh, there is the USB header here and I just used shielding from that as my grounding point. I wouldn't suggest using the screw holes again because those are your uh, mounting holes for the CPU cooling. So not really optimal. Values of this variable resistor, I would suggest something from 20, though 20 not really, to 100 uh, kilo ohms. 
Now 20 only if you're basically doing or if you are perfectly fine with a relatively high minimum voltage. Uh, should be something like I think 1.8 volts or something. Uh, right boot up voltage with 20 kilo ohms. I personally use I use 50 kilo ohms and I would say that is uh, about the ideal value for this here. Uh, anyways let's move on to the two next ones. Now this is the area with those two LM324s. Those are actually LM324s, not a, a clone this time. Nice. Uh, here we have our VDD and our VDM mods. Now let's start off with VDD. For VDD uh, there is two pads you can grab it from. It's one this, this. But personally, I prefer it to grab it from these two resistors. Like the two inner pads here are also, well, your, in this case, uh, positive input of the op amp in here. So for a mod with the positive side, we have to actually put a very resistor to 3.3 volts here. So. This V3. Okay. So, a good place to grab 3.3 volts on this thing is this unpopulated unpopul pad right here. So, this is 3.3 volts. Uh, for a value here, I would suggest using something uh, in the range of 10 to 20 kilo ohms. Just your standard um, very resistor basically. So any of these pads and these two would do. Now the, the reason why this is the positive side is basically that the resistance on the uh, negative bias up here is uh, too low so well it's not too low. We could in theory get away with a hundred ohm variable resistor as well but it would get rather hot so I don't like that way. So we are using a higher value on the positive side and hook it to 3.3 volts. Uh, anyways let's move on to VDIM. VDIM would be this here. This time we're going to do a usual mod to ground. This and this are also spots you can solder to. Now from there you want your very resistor this time to ground so this is ground uh, ground points on here easy as usually a screw hole right here uh, the top one of this capacitor actually that's under our ground here and there is another one I think somewhere yeah, of course, you can use the opposite side of this unpopulated capacitor pad that's also ground. Uh, for a value, I would suggest something in the range of 500 uh, ohms to 1 kilo ohm for this. Uh, on mine, I have a 1 kilo ohm in there, I think. Actually, no, I have 500 ohm in there. Uh, which is, is good in combination with the 5 volt rail mod. Anyways, let's move on to the 5 volt rail mod for our VDIM. Here we are. Now, usually you have. Let's pick a color, like green, I guess. You have two 0 ohm resistors right here, which you want to remove, obviously. Those are. I, I think they use it as a fuse or something here. Anyways, uh, you want to remove those. Then you want to add a cap here because usually this pad is unpopulated. And from there you can basically follow the guide in the video on the bench. So run the wire on the back to the 20 pin. I hope this was helpful and well. These ASRock boards are rather available, so 
maybe give it a chance, grab one and, and have some fun with it. Bye.